When cybersecurity specialists talk about individuals' personal accounts getting hacked and company networks getting breached, they say it's not a matter of if, but when. Now, that may sound somewhat cavalier, but when it happens to you or your organization, the moment of realization will be worse than you can imagine. It's not news to say that the rate of cybercrime has been escalating dramatically since the beginning of 2023. But what may be news for you is what you can get on the dark web and just how much of it there is for sale. In fact, you're likely going to be shocked by some of what you're about to hear and see. Hi, my name is Jane Michelle Clark. I'm the CMO and Director of Business Strategy at Cloud Managed Networks. Yep, that's me in the middle of some of our team members. We're just about to embark on a little team building activity and wanted to take a quick snapshot to capture the moment. At Cloud Managed Networks, part of what we do is stay current with cyber trends, crimes, and the solutions that help in the fight against these bad guys. As for the rest, I'll fill in some of those details later. Right now, there is a cyber attack occurring every 26 seconds somewhere in the world, and many will be successful. According to the FBI and Interpol, approximately 33 billion, yes, billion, 33 billion accounts will have been breached by the end of 2023. Now that's about 97 cybercrime victims being created each and every hour. Despite robust and vigorous efforts by myriad well-respected international organizations. And unfortunately, things are going to escalate in 2024 and experts expect to see double-digit increases in successful criminal breaches in the months ahead. This is in part because access brokers are stepping up their nefarious activities and because they are now very well organized. In fact, some of them are better organized than the businesses they breach. To explain this, and so that you can see some examples from the dark web, we're going to share with you part of the interview we were invited to do for the United Nations General Assembly in September 23. Former UK politician and current correspondent for the European, Nick Dubois, is conducting the interview. Jamie Shaw, you talked about the major news stories, and there was a massive headline uh, in November 22 when it was revealed, and I find this quite hard to just stay, say, even though it's fact, that a hacker was selling personal information of some 500 million WhatsApp users from 84 countries on the dark web. Now, this cyber crook, he claimed to have up to date personal details of 32 million users from the US, 11 million from the UK and 6 million from Germany, amongst others. It seems, frankly, incredible that a hacker could gain access to so much valuable intelligence. Has something changed in terms of who is hacking and how? Yeah, it has. And unfortunately, Interpol verifies that that is a true statement in terms of those WhatsApp addresses. But there's no doubt there has been a sea change in terms of how cybercrime is being perpetrated today. You know, you think about the, you know, you see the, the memes of those little hoodie clad guys in a basement, you know, the faces that you can't see. Well, those, sim those small petty cyber criminals, they've morphed into well-organized and very well-funded business owners. And those hoodies have given way to Armani and Hugo Boss. Now, this is the second time you've suggested that uh, cyber criminals are far more organized today than was ever uh, the case. Even, even a couple of years ago, it's changed dramatically. Can you expand on that for me more? Certainly. I mean, hacking in one form or another, it's always been big business and it's been a very lucrative uh, pursuit, which is why so many, you know, why so many people do it, of course. But it, now we're seeing that these criminals, and they are criminals, have started to organize themselves along corporate lines. You're seeing all the organizational structural pieces in place that you see with large companies. And as part of that, we're also seeing there has been a dramatic increase, uh, almost twofold, threefold increase in the number of access brokers that are out there. Now, an access broker, it's similar to a real estate broker. So imagine that a real estate broker has lists of properties that are available for sale. The access brokers have lists of 
data that you can actually go out and buy quite easily on the dark web. Let me show you uh, a couple of examples because there's been a dramatic increase in the number of listings you're going to be able to find. This first one, you can see there's a vendor who's advertising credit card sales you can buy them in bulk, as you can see here, for as little as 350 US dollars. You too can own, and I'm talking, I'm teasing a little bit, but for $350 US, you can get up to 50 cards with anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 as their credit limit. And they also tell you how much is left on the card so that you can say, okay, great, I want to make this purchase, but I know I can't spend more than X, otherwise I'll go over the card's limit. What's really scary is that anybody can get access to this, they can get access to a dot onion extension, which is where you'll find this, simply by downloading a Tor browser. You can't get to it through your regular browser, but you certainly can easily and too easily, in my opinion, access the dark web these days. Let's go to the next slide. If you look at it, uh, here you get an opportunity maybe to become a US citizen if you want. For $4,000, you get to have a passport and they say it's bulletproof. Bulletproof passport, driver's license, social insurance number, birth certificate, all of these things. But it seems a little sketchy because they're asking for, you know, say a thousand dollar deposit and you look at the screen, you'll see that it's a $1,500 first charge. Well, they're sketchy, it's not surprising. But maybe you don't want to live in the US. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next example. Maybe you'd prefer to be a middle-aged uh, woman living in Canada. This is a Quebecois woman. And if you want, not only can, for $25, you can get her identity, but pay a little bit more and you can find out her credit rating as well. Maybe though, identity theft isn't your business or creating fake IDs is not how you make your money. Maybe your business model is simply to be able to earn a little bit of extra cash and do different things. Well, in that case, you've got a whole slew of options. If you look at this next slide, you'll see that this purveyor of different accounts from PayPal to Amazon and so on, gives lots of opportunities for people to be able to start becoming their own cyber criminals. Wow, those for sale, Screenshots scare me each and every time I hear them because losing your identity can truly upend your life and sometimes ruin your credit score for decades. But these bad actors can do far worse for corporations. In fact, they can steal the business right out from under the true owners and there can be significant costs associated with a breach. But the problem extends well beyond that, as you will see. From what I understand, there has been a corresponding increase in the cost of these crimes. In 2022, we read the figure was six trillion and experts are estimating the figure will rise to 10.5 trillion by 2025, less than two years away. There's a 175% increase there within two years. Are most of these costs related to ransomware and the cost associated with, of course, restoring the operations? Well, although the ransom fee, if it gets paid by the company, represents a very interesting sum at times, it's a fraction of the cost. Most of the costs associated with remediating a situation after you've been breached fall into four different categories. The first is in the investigation and remediation portion, and that's about 40% of the figure that you cited. These are the costs that are associated with trying to figure out what went wrong in the first place, the identification portion of it, then resolving the problem, now, you said that the costs uh, associated with cyber attacks uh, fall into four categories, investigation and remediation being the first. What are the other three there? Oh, absolutely. Um, every one of these is business interruption. Every single moment that your company is down, that you can't sell your products, that you can't manufacture items or deliver the services that you need will cost your company thousands of dollars in profit or revenue. And if it's a critical infrastructure that's been targeted or hospital. In that case, then it can actually literally be a matter of life and death. The next one is brand reputation. I mean, if you keep going down or you don't handle it well when your system doesn't work, customers start to complain. It could be a huge impact on future business. Right now, you know, in August of 2023, LinkedIn faced some challenges because a lot of its accounts ended up being frozen out. Mm -hmm. 11 days later, people are still having problems accessing it. And when you've spent decades in some instances building a network, you've got 15,000 or more connections, having that wiped out and having to start all over again, that's a huge impact to future people wanting to 
that particular product or service. The last one is something that we don't hear as much about, quite frankly, and it's becoming a much larger cost in terms of what happens when you get breached. And that's the theft of your corporate strategies, of your intellectual properties. I'm going to ask you to cut to a slide here because if you see from this first slide, there's a disturbing amount of information, corporate information, that's available for sale on the dark mm -hmm. web. This first one comes from Avis Locker. It's a company that has been offering ransomware as a service to criminals since 2021. And it's known for targeting critical infrastructure, government and other public facilities, financial institutions, critical manufacturing. Most of these types of services, they have little clauses that say you may not use our services to go after nuclear power plants and other things, but not Avis Lockers. So they've been targeting firms in Canada, the US, uh, Europe, including companies such as Germany, Spain, the UK, Belgium, countries a little further afield from me, like Taiwan, Turkey, Syria, Saudi, all of them. No country, it seems, is immune. This next slide, it offers up the Cambrian Group, which with you being in the UK is probably a name familiar to you because it provides residential, educational, and other services to support social, emotional, and mental health needs of children and young adults across the country. And in this case, personal information from a very vulnerable population is being offered up for sale. Now let's look at this next one. This next one is only about selling global mining products catalog of services. Well, a lot of this is information that global mining doesn't want everybody knowing that it offers things that it doesn't make available to people, let alone telling them what it's gonna cost. The estimate is that now every single month, at least two companies around the globe are forced to close their doors. Their business gets destroyed because these bad actors, they get in and they sell to some unscrupulous group of people, the patents, the processes, and the client list. So these companies go on now to replicate the products. They go after their customers and say, hey, you know, we've got this product, same one that you've been using for 20, 30% less. And it will wipe out these companies because there's very little recourse they have right now. And sadly, this is an escalating figure. Now, you we talk about major headlines around the world, and most of those focus on the large multinational organizations. And the, but you know what? Most of the companies that are being targeted are actually the smaller size enterprises. They're the ones that have somewhere between 100 and 1,000 employees, anywhere from say 50 million to a billion dollars in business. But equally plagued by attacks right now are slightly smaller firms, whether it's in North America and Europe, those are really being targeted, usually for corporate, corporate espionage reasons, as we talked about. But regardless of why they're going after them, in 90% of cases, they're also getting the employee and the other stakeholders' personal data. And that's one of the reasons why you've got to absolutely safeguard those personal files however you possibly can. In business for over 20 years, with nearly 100 employees, we are honored to work with enterprise level clients in both the public and private sector, as well as SMBs. Although we work closely with Cisco, Cloud Managed Networks is a manufacturer agnostic firm that has strong partnerships with all the major solution providers. We can help you with your cloud, edge, network, endpoints, and personnel training as well as with your e-commerce and other customer solutions, including customer experience initiatives that lead to higher levels of engagement. Specifically, in addition to being trusted for our strategic recommendations, we provide business process management and IT advice, along with hardware, software, and cloud-based solutions and back-end systems, including application systems analysis, design and implementation for major e-commerce platforms, ERPs, and custom apps. Now, of course, we would never want you to take any chances when it comes to your network operations and cybersecurity. However, in life as in business, there are some risks worth taking, including reaching out to see how we might be of help to you. Thank you for spending some time with us today, and I hope you do indeed reach out. We would love to get to know you and see if there are ways in which we can help your organization's IT infrastructure work harder to help you realize your corporate goals. And until next time, this is Jane Michelle Clark from Cloud Managed Networks.